Duty is defined as a task that one is required to perform, a responsibility, a legal responsibility. You are owed a duty by others at all times, whether a sole person or a huge corporation. You are owed a duty to be safe from negligent, careless, intentional acts that cause you serious damage, death, permanent injury, catastrophic loss. Others have caused a breach, a breach of the duty due you and yours. Your only recourse is to pursue a legal claim. It is impossible to turn back time so that the injury and damage did not occur. Monetary compensation is the only alternative, both to compensate you for your loss but also to confirm the conduct of the wrongdoer. Motor vehicle accidents, slip and fall injuries, assault, dangerous products, workplace injuries, animal bites, defamation, these are a portion of the wrongs that are inflicted on you and yours. Upsitnik and Associates can make the difference. Al Upsitnik has litigated, tried, and settled injury claims throughout the United States in his home state of Pennsylvania, but also New York, Maryland, and Alaska, just to name a few. When duty is breached, contact Opsitnik and Associates to make things right. For you, for yours. Contact them toll-free, 1-866-391-3299, or visit them on their Facebook page, Opsitnik and Associates, or their website, OpsitniksLaw.com. See the links in the description below for more information. Hello, everybody. Zach back with another episode of the Carnival of Randomness. More specifically, another episode of... Is it consoles and computers? Yes. Consoles goes first. Yes. Rye is back with us, and yesterday... Was it yesterday? Yeah, I think so. Well, yesterday, as we record this, but could be last week by the time this airs, there was some news about uh, the game, I think, that took this whole pandemic thing by storm. Yeah. And that would be Cyberpunk, what was it, 2077? Yep. Um, I mean, what a journey it was. So, I know you had it for a time. Yes. So, for those that don't understand it fully, let's go back. The hype on this video game was incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, for years. Yeah. It's been building for a long time, and they, you know, CD Projekt Red definitely took advantage. And, you know, it was, you know, Keanu Reeves and this motion capture thing, and it was just supposed to be otherworldly in terms of quality. Yeah. And then the game gets released. And did you have it um, release day? Uh, no. I think I picked it up a little bit after that. Okay. Not long, though. Probably within a week of it coming out. But I didn't pay that much attention to it um, because it just sort of wasn't that much on my radar i knew about it but i i never played the witcher um you know i'm not uh cd project red wasn't sort of one of my main developers that i follow right but i was bored it was late one night and you know i was looking for a new rpg to play and so i ended up just grabbing it is that literally how it happened you were just bored yeah i was couldn't sleep one night you know it's like one, two in the morning, and it's, you know, surfing around the Xbox store, and it was like, you know what, why not? It's supposed to be really, you know, sort of really deep and immersive and long. Right, and, and that... you know, all the stuff we had seen leading up to the release kind of led us to believe that. Yeah. You know, so I just grabbed it and uh, played through. I, I beat the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Then ended up, once, you know, everything kind of hit the fan, ended up getting a refund for it. Right, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Why don't we relay Mm -hmm. some of the glory that was the it that hit the fan? I mean, it's crazy to think that it only actually launched in mid-December. So, you know, it feels like it's been a lot longer, but we're only a few months 
you know, beyond it. Yeah, what's it, like, five months removed from it or so? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was... If anyone remembers No Man's Sky, it feels like it may have even surpassed that level of hype. I mean, that was literally and figuratively otherworldly hype. It was, and I think this one may have topped it just because... Uh, CD Projekt Red is a much more known developer, and of course then it had, you know, Keanu Reeves well, exactly. in it. Exactly. Even if it wasn't a, a big-name developer, the fact that it had Keanu Reeves in it is enough. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to try and do this without spoiling it for anybody who may want to play it. I like Keanu Reeves, you know, it's he seems to be a really nice guy, but the more stuff that sort of comes out, it seems to be a little bit hard to deny that bringing him on kind of changed the direction of the game in a huge way. How's that? That he got really into it and kind of wanted to expand his role a lot more beyond what was originally planned. Okay. And the problem is you can do that on a movie without it being too much of a bother. Right. Yeah, that's something easy, but game you, have you can't really do it on a video game you know entire teams have already sort of designed levels designed areas designed you know just sort of things for the game hundreds of hours into you know designing things and then suddenly you know all that goes in the garbage because the plot goes somewhere else so that well know, exactly it's not like a movie where you can just go back and reshoot a scene yeah you know you, you know, have to everybody. literally build it from the ground up with code you know, so it's just, I think it, you know, it just really kind of mocked with some of the stuff they had already planned, and it just makes it much harder. You know, that was only one of the main, one of the problems, though. Uh, you expect some features to be dropped, you know, by launch. It happens with basically every AAA game. They always promise more than they end up delivering, and you get some stuff stripped out of the game. Well, yeah, I mean, eventually because you're going to start hitting the time crunch. Yeah, you know, and so, you know, you expect some, but the problem with Cyberpunk was that it was more than some. It was ended up being a really kind of empty game. And that's the thing, Uh, full disclosure, I never played it, but I talked to you about it, and Mm -hmm. then I watched some reviews of it, and that's what it seemed like. There was just not much in it. Yeah, Uh, you know, there were problems with the console versions. Uh, I ended up being lucky. I played it on one of the first generation Xbox One, so it's a pretty old console, and I actually really did not have almost any problems with the game, especially compared to what I was hearing from a lot of people. I think it may have crashed once or twice. Most of my issues were, you know, much more minor floating items, uh, T-posing NPCs, that sort of things. All of which are hilarious, and they have probably hundreds of compilation videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah. that. Tons, you know, but that kind of stuff is, you know, pretty minor. A lot of people weren't practically weren't even able to play it, even on some of the sort of slightly newer consoles. Yeah, I think um, even the, um, what was, it was out for when the Xbox S was out, right? Well, that's the sort of the thing. It actually released, I think, just before the new consoles launched. So, uh-huh. you know, a lot of people are trying to say, well, you know, just buy, you know, just play it on the new one. But if you bought it on launch day... I don't think you could, or it would have been very difficult, at least with shortages of the new consoles. Only a very scant few people had any of them. Right, because I, th- I thought it was one of the first games that was released after the console came out. No, I think it was just before. Wow, that's a big planning error right there. Yeah, you know, it sort of... There's a, there was a lot of stuff, you know, CD Projekt Red completely hid the older console version, uh, you know, how bad it was. They Because they made it and they saw what it was. Well, that's exactly why they did it, but, you know, that's never good. They refused to send out any review copies for older consoles, um, and they actually outright lied and said that it ran quite well on them. <sighs> did it? Well, no. For most people, it didn't. You know, it practically didn't run at all. Well, that's the stuff I saw. Like, it was... 
like you were looking yeah. at it, you would think it was, you know, an early version of some computer game. Yeah, and a lot of people were just getting a lot of blue screen crashes and stuff like that. Yeah, not, you know, what, you so ex- a lot of- not what you expect for a game coming out in 2020. Yeah, you know, and and at that point, you have to remember that CD Projekt Red was, of course, running on a massive amount of goodwill because of The Witcher 3. Yeah, and that was a huge success. You know, it was a huge success. They were, I think, at least at that point, still a fairly small developer. Like, they... You know, within video games, you kind of have developers who are considered to be, you know, not corporate shills. And then, you know, you have the EA. I was going to say, then you have EA. You know, and that kind of Ubisoft, uh, the ones that are kind of considered the assholes of, you know, the video game world. Right. With a lot of just nonsense. And CD Projekt Red was, you know, one of the quote unquote good guys from what I saw, you know, online. So everybody trusted them. Yeah, and they were just hovering around that level of you knew they were going to come out with something you just didn't know when. Yeah. And then the Witcher you know, came out and they're like, yeah, and there it is. You know, and then they actually from, uh, from what I remember, they delayed the release of Cyberpunk at least once, I think maybe twice. I think originally it was actually supposed to come out around uh, sort of this time spring. Yeah, and that's what I had originally heard was it was like first quarter. Yeah, and then it ended up not coming out until mid-December, which, I mean, can you imagine if it had come out in spring? If, yeah, exactly. If that was the, Without the you know, extra eight months of whatever they were doing. Exactly, work that they put in on it. <laughs> imagine, it would have been insane. At least it may have had charm, though. Yeah, exactly, it may, uh, may have rivaled uh, Bethesda for broken buggy launches. Maybe. Maybe, but probably not. All right, so we get to the point where the bugs are completely undeniable. People are getting mm-hmm. upset. Yeah. So, naturally, what would be a company's first reaction? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're Hello Games, kind of acceptance, I guess. If you're CD Projekt Red, kind of outright denial exactly. that there is a problem. You know, so um, naturally, the first logical step is to, is to deny that there ever was an issue. Yeah, it all happened so fast. I think within about a week of it launching, Sony had actually taken it down from its store, which I don't think it's ever done. Right, that's when people really started to think something was bad, when Sony pulled it from the PlayStation store, but yet Xbox still had it on their store. Yeah, they did, and then uh, Sony, I believe, was also the first one to issue basically no questions asked returns, which it also tends not to do. Everything I've kind of heard about Sony is that it's quite difficult to get refunds on digital copies. Yeah, and not this one. Like, anybody that bought it, I think I don't think they even had to apply for a refund. I think they just sent it to them. It was, from what I saw, I think it was decently easy after after a few days to to get one whereas xbox really lagged behind i had a lot of trouble you had a lot of issues you know and at that point it was they had also said that they were going to do the same basically it didn't matter how long you'd played the game or if you'd beaten it or whatever that it was so broken and and buggy and everything that everybody who wanted one would get a refund but it was still very difficult to to do because uh Xbox has sort of a little form you fill out, and you can only fill it out once. If they deny your refund through that, you can't, there's no button to sort of reapply. You have to start kind of going through their website and just emailing, you know, various emails and really sort of pushing. And eventually, if you do that, you will get one. Right. And the first time you filled it out was before they said they were giving everybody a refund. Yeah. You know, so they did So your application it. had already been rejected. Yeah, and then it was sort of, you know, everybody was kind of helping out everybody else on, you know, like the big Twitters and stuff saying, you know, if you've been denied, email this or go to this forum. And so there was sort of a lot of help from fans, you know, to help each other get refunds. Yeah. So long story (laughs) short, you did get the refund eventually. I did, yeah. Because, and some people, you know, said, well, just wait and they'll patch it. But this 
where the sort of things are at now is exactly what I felt would happen. Right. And now, what was the news that came out the other day? That they were abandoning developing any sort of multiplayer for the game, which is kind of the first snowball, you know, that happens when companies plan to abandon a game, you know? They insisted that they were going to fix it and make it, you know, what it was. And there was a lot of denial just because of how much stuff they would have had to add. It would have been probably surpassed No Man's Sky for how many sort of patches and things they needed to do. Well, I was thinking about it. They would basically have to redo the game entirely. Yeah, and, you know, we'll touch back on them in a minute, um, sort of what they would actually have to add. But it just it just felt like too much and they won't, you know, if they were willing to release it and willing to be, you know, to put in so much denial that there was a problem, it's clear that it's a company that no longer sort of has any shame or concern for customers. You know, Hello Games was a tiny little development studio that clearly felt embarrassed and, you know, shame over the state of No Man's Sky. So they went away and they spent like two years, you know, releasing huge patches for it. Right, and we've touched on this before, and from what I understand, what they've done is actually create a really good game. Yeah, I think it, from everything I've heard, it's great now. Yeah. Um, but so... it, just, it just doesn't seem like C- that's who CDPR is. You know, they don't, they clearly don't have any shame at all. And I mean, that came quick, because The Witcher 3 came out, what, 2017? I think somewhere around there, I'm not sure. 2017, and you're looking at in under a three-year one game period. 2015. 2015, okay, so it's a little older than I thought. Yeah. But still, five years isn't that long for a company to completely lose their morals. Yeah, you know. Um, So... This just feels like Anthem all over again. You know, Bioware promised that they were going to completely revamp Anthem, and, you know, they released a couple of, I think, mostly bug-themed patches. They put up a roadmap of development and then quickly abandoned the game entirely and now have outright said that Anthem 2.0 is will not be a thing. Yeah, it's never going to happen, and that's probably the smartest move they could have made. It probably is, you know, but... This is why you get a refund and you don't just wait hoping that, you know, the game will be fixed in in five or six months because it seems like CD Projekt Red is gearing up to do the same thing, you know. First, it's always the multiplayer because that's the most complex part and then pretty soon they start jettisoning other features and then it's the announcement that, you know, they've done as much as they're going to do and they're moving on to other projects. I mean, jettison what features? It really didn't have any. That's true. Um, So I'm just, you know, my prediction, a couple of more bug-themed patches to make the game at least reasonably stable on modern consoles, and then they'll just move on to other things. Yeah. So basically, that's it. Yeah, I think so. I don't expect that they're going to spend two years, you know, basically, yeah, remaking the game. No, they're going to try to play it off as best they can and work on a different project. Mm -hmm. Which, God knows what results that'll have. It's hard to feel like they're going to, you know, they've ruined, obviously, a huge amount of, of goodwill and basically killed their reputation. And that's what it is, and in the video game industry especially... People are so fickle that mm-hmm. once that trust is kind of broken, it's real hard to get it to come back from that. It is, you know, so we'll see. Uh, but if we want to talk about the actual features... Yes, please. The main ones that are the problem are... Uh, one is their life path system, which is something that when you're designing your character, you sort of give them one of three little backstories mm-hmm. where you can either be a corporate shill, ironically. Yeah, who knew? Uh, sort of a car gang, a nomadic car gang, or a sort of street gang, street kid gang member. Okay. And 
they were really part of the hype where it was supposed to be that these would really alter the game, sort of that it would be a really different experience depending on which one you chose. Right, which would make sense and wouldn't be that hard to do, theoretically. No. Yeah, um, but it's one of the main things that ended up being stripped down to almost nothing. It's about six to maybe ten minutes of gameplay, unique gameplay at the beginning. And then it merges into, you know, into the main game and there's maybe two or three lines of unique dialogue and that's really about it. That's really boring. And it's sort of part of the problem and frustration that a lot of people have when developers kind of try to pretend that they're inventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. Because Bioware figured that out back in 2009 with Dragon Age uh, Origins. The Origins in that name is for their system where it did have that. You would play as a, a dwarf or an elf or a human, and it was actually quite unique. You had about an hour of unique gameplay at the beginning before the game sort of railroaded you you know, into a, into the main storyline. And even then, it had a lot more sort of unique dialogue and options. Right, and I and that was cool. It's really cool, mm -hmm. and that really helps with the immersion when you can spend a good amount of time building up your character. Yeah, you know, but it was sort of like other developers figured that out, you know, a decade ago. Uh, but CDPR is just sort of, oh no, we're doing something totally new. Yeah. Let's so that was one of the Let's reinvent the thi this thing that's already been around for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, so that was one of the things that was, you know, intensely disappointing. It just didn't mean anything, didn't do anything. Right. The other huge one was their sort of wanted system. If you commit crimes in the city, uh, you expect police to, you know, to come after you. Yeah. And this is something that, of course, GTA figured out. I was going to say, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto was doing that years before. I was going to say in the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, they basically had perfected a, a wanted system and having, you know, police chase you and everything. Oh, they definitely did. And, you know, having played a lot of those games over the years, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's basically what people were expecting because it's one of those features that now has kind of become an industry standard. Like, if you're going to have a wanted system, it's probably going to be based on the one that was made for GTA. Yeah, which makes sense because, because it, it was a... It was a good, solid idea, and it's real easy to expand upon. Mm -hmm. But the one in Cyberpunk is so broken. Uh, you can be on the tallest rooftop, and if you shoot somebody, the police just appear on the same rooftop with you. Oh, isn't that convenient? Uh, as they just soon happened as you to get... be going by in a police blimp, did they? Oh, apparently, yeah. They just spawn in right behind you, and then if you... Like, if you're running on a road and you shoot somebody, all you have to do is basically run, like, ten feet away and they, they don't even try and chase you. Left the jurisdiction, huh? Basically, you know, so it's completely broken. Obviously, that was, you know, a huge problem. Like, you can strip away, like, you know, unique weapons or, you know, the fashion aspect that they kind of hyped up. Most people don't care about that, but when you're kind of looking at core features like that, it's hard to, to sort of even play the game without it being pretty immersion breaking well that's what i that's what i'm thinking like if it's that clunky it really throws you off it does you know because there's just a lot of sort of parts in the game missions in the game where you know police or sort of being chased would be part of it and it, none of that works yeah and that just yeah. ruins the game the other problems were just the sort of story of your main character without spoiling anything is sort of a, it's supposed to be a, a sort of coming up story. No matter which life path you chose, you kind of start at the bottom of this fantasy city as a nobody. And then by the end, you're supposed to be a big somebody. But like you never, you have one really tiny, crappy apartment that you never move out of to get a better one. Yeah. We've reached the yeah. pinnacle at age at age thirty. Yeah, you know, in this uh, horrendous little thing with like one storage bin, <laughs> you know, and for a game that's kind of quasi loot shooter, like it's really based on on a lot of stuff. Yeah, 
it's really sort of irking that you have kind of one crappy storage bin and that's all you get for the entire game. Oh no, that's that's weak. Like even let's go back to kind of compare it to Grand Theft Auto. Mm. You know, even in the one of the first ones I played, Grand Theft Auto Three, you could buy multiple different bases. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. You know, again, you sort of look at a game like that, which is superior in all mechanics. God, yeah. You know, to Cyberpunk, even Bethesda, which is, you know, one of the most notoriously lazy, (laughs) you know, cheap developers, you know. Spoiler alert, go back and listen to the one we did on Bethesda. Yeah, even they had, uh, you know, in Skyrim, uh, in the Hearthfire DLC, which launched a year later, so 2012, you could at least buy a few different houses, and and then they sort of had one where you could make your own house, you know, and that was back in 2012. Yeah, exactly, so we're talking a game that came out in 2020. Mm-hmm, you know, why but... didn't it have this? Exactly. It makes no sense to me. It it doesn't for most people, and it doesn't for the story, but it's clearly one of those features that just got jettisoned, you know? I guess. That just didn't time, and so now if you're kind of sitting around hoping that they'll patch all that stuff in, mm. it seems it seems like it's a, going to be a lot of work. I think so. And considering what they put out the first place, do you really think they want to take the time and effort to redo it? Well, that's it. And, you know, it sucks because obviously it's, you know, it's a cool looking world. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, it's really nice looking. And there's a lot of parts of the game that that were cool. Uh, Some of the NPCs and sort of, I wouldn't say they're sort of companion characters, but sort of companions in the storyline. Mm-hmm were really good. Like, the voice acting is good, they're interesting, you get sort of invested in their storylines and doing missions for them. Uh, the writing is actually pretty good. Which is good. And, uh, you know, we've mentioned a few times that that can really make or break a game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's all that kind of stuff, but it just... It's just sort of hampered by a little bit too much emphasis on Keanu Reeves' character and and then sort of not enough actual kind of gameplay. Yeah. And again, you know, you need all the elements to have a successful game. Yeah. You know, even if one, one element is just absolutely beautiful and stunning, it's just not enough. Well, that's it. They clearly decided to prioritize just the sort of physical appearance of the city that you're in. Yeah, and, and I mean, they, they did a great job when they did that. They did. There's a lot of parts of it that do look really good. And again, even on my crappy old, you know, Xbox One, it looks pretty good. Yeah. But... But, it's yeah, it's just too empty. You know, there's just not enough stuff to do. Yeah. Too much of it is completely... And sort of... What's there also just doesn't feel sometimes that interesting. The I found the sort of character leveling up system, picking sort of different parts for things, pretty tedious and boring. Really? See, that's supposed to be the fun part. Yeah, you know, usually you'd think that, you know, making your character better at something would be, one, really noticeable in terms of, you know, making the game sort of easier or better or whatever, and then also fun, but... I just found most of the sort of perks just really generic, you know? Increased your aim by 1%, uh, 2% faster reloading. Uh, yeah, that's, you know. that's cookie-cutter it's, stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's just really bone average. Like, if if you just listed them, there's almost nothing in there that you could immediately identify as belonging to sort of a cyberpunk future dystopian world it's just right it could have been any video game ever yeah you know it practically could be anything from you know fallout to call of duty to you know just cause yeah so and i just didn't find that it sort of made my character feel 
frankly, much more powerful each time I did it. You know, it was sort of the game just felt the same all the way through. And then, and then that does beg the question that, you know, what exactly was happening in those upgrades? Yeah, you know, I wonder if that's another place that just ended up being kind of pared down and going with just the most basic stuff that they could get coded in in time. Well, I guess the one thing I've always wondered, not just specifically this game, but you bringing it up made me think. Mm. When you see those, you know, accuracy increases in the perks... Yeah. It's like, you often wonder, does it really work? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't seem to really matter much. Uh, guns and bullets are so ridiculously plentiful in the game that you can basically spend the whole time just praying and praying, and I didn't find I pretty much ever ran out of ammo. Oh, well, that's fine then. You know, every... Pretty much every single enemy practically drops a new gun. This sort of goes back to the loot thing I was talking about. Yeah. You know, so you go and do one, you know, six-minute mission, and you come back with 14 new guns. Yeah, and while that's cool, it does kind of become boring real quick. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of petition of, of guns and other items. Well, it's not just that. It's... You know, you would think, oh, this is great, I have basically unlimited ammo, but then you start to think, man, this is really, you know, where's the challenge? Yeah. Well, and it's not built for sort of certain uh, play styles. Uh, I, I sometimes like to do sort of sniper stuff, and I started out that way, and I just didn't find that it kind of... It didn't feel like the game wanted me to do that. Yeah, it just didn't give you the opportunities to? No, and it just... It's weird to say, but it just sort of felt like the game kind of fought back against it, and it was much more designed kind of for for small, sort of like handguns, and much more sort of just up-close stuff. It doesn't kind of want you to, to hang back and just pick at people. See, again, now it's taking away the choices that you have as the gamer. Yeah. And to me, that's a problem. Ed- yeah, you know, and just... So it ended up just being much easier just to kind of put your all your level points into handguns and just run at everything. <laughs> I'm wondering if maybe sniping was a feature that got purged. It could have. I know there were other ones that that got purged. You were supposed to have kind of these cybernetic blades that would come out of your arm and that you could sort of crawl around on walls like Spider-Man with them, and those got taken out completely. And then all of a sudden, everything is funneled toward handgun combat. Yeah, because their sort of level design, a lot of their missions are kind of in sort of small maze corridors or sort of like enemies hidden far sort of deep in places where yeah. it's, you have to be pretty much right in front of them before they'll even sort of spawn in. Ugh. You know, there's just no way you can kind of hang back because, you know, you have to go through this shipping cart maze down at the docks or whatever, sort of, of the harbor area. Yes, of course. Why not? Yeah, you know. So there's just sort of a lot of stuff like that, which, again, kind of unfortunate, you know. Well, that's what it is. And I think that's a really good word for it. It's unfortunate because... Even if a game doesn't come in to existence with a lot of hype like this one did. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not a fan of the genre, every person in the video game community loves to see a brand new game, especially from, you know, a lesser known or unknown developer come in and just be great. Yeah, you know, and it's... And this just, you know... I, fell on its I, face. I, I think a lot of people would have traded a lot of that build-up hype for a game that actually worked. Well, that's it. Uh, obviously, there's kind of been a void in, I guess, this kind of game, sort of future dystopia stuff, since basically, practically since Fallout 3, you know, Bethesda kind of has fallen off. Yeah, they kind of went in a different direction. So there's there was really kind of an opening here, and I think... People who maybe didn't care about The Witcher or didn't care about CD Projekt Red as a developer were still kind of interested in 
the potential for a you know a dystopian world, an RPG of this kind. Maybe. And unfortunately, it just didn't work. You know. No. I mean, that's the problem. It just didn't work in any aspect. No. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I w- if they do end up sort of pulling off the impossible and and bringing in a lot of the stuff, I would buy it again. But I just had no confidence that they were going to do that. <laughs> no, you know, and I mean, I really don't think they will. And for the price that, you know, you ended up paying for the game at launch, which I think was, uh, here was like 70 something with all the taxes and everything. Right. I, I, th- I was going to say you paid probably close to 80. I think so. Yeah. You know, not worth that at all. Oh, well, even down here, it was probably, probably 65 Six. or so after taxes. Exactly. Trust standard AAA pricing is yeah, basically it's usually fifty nine ninety nine. I think. Yeah, you know, so it's just not worth that if it's going to kind of stay roughly where it is in terms of kind of what there is to do. Yeah, and honestly, like like we said earlier, they would basically have to recreate the game. Yeah. Just to fix the bugs. Mm, and and then, then essentially to do all the filler to put in the stuff that they actually need to, they would essentially have to create another game. Yeah. So they couldn't create one game in five years, and now they're trying to claim that they can create two new games in two years. Practically, or less, you know, people are... I know there's people who are kind of waiting around hoping that... You know, things will start being added in within the next few months, which seems unlikely. Good luck. Yeah. Which, again, you know, is there were some things that were just strange, too. Uh, the driving was horrendous. Those videos are funny. Ish. <laughs> they are. Uh, it's not a pleasant experience to drive, which is weird because the game... There's a whole sort of side segment of people basically throwing cars at you, trying to get you to buy lots and lots of cars. And the cars themselves are actually pretty cool looking. Uh, whoever designed them, you know, did a great job. But the actual driving, yeah, I the tried mechanics about, of the driving, not so much. Uh, the camera angles are so frustrating. It's kind of low down behind the car. You constantly have to use the joystick to sort of try and get it where you want. The cars just feel like you're trying to move a building. Oh, so lovely all around. Yeah, so I gave up on driving anything but a very small motorcycle pretty fast. Right, and again, that just makes it even worse because now the main mode of transport is basically gone. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a pretty decently sized map, so there's quite a lot of kind of driving around. Right, there exactly. Is... You're not going to want to run all those places. No, there is a sort of rough fast travel system, but, you know, again, it's fairly limited. You're not, a lot of times you're not going to be, frankly, very near forward when you get to. It'll sort of put you like six or seven blocks away. Yeah, it's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if you're all the way over on the other side of the map, it's at least a start, but, you know, those are sort of where you'd fast travel, then presumably, you know, call your car. Right. (laughs) Except that, yeah, driving is terrible. Oh, my. So, I don't know. Okay, well, let me ask you this, then. Putting aside everything, outside of aesthetics, did they do anything positive? Uh, the characters were probably the best part. Uh, for me, outside of Keanu Reeves, but some of that's just opinion. His character is is supposed to be basically a massive asshole, and is, so props that he, you know, pulled it off, but I just found him annoying. He pops up all the time, never shuts up. It felt a little bit like kind of the Jar Jar Banks thing. Oh. You know, I kind of just wanted to go around and and do side missions sometimes and, you know, or just muck around and he would just pop up, you know, and be annoying. Like, why are you going over here? Yeah, you know, it's sort of... So, but 
the other characters were were quite interesting. Uh, There's sort of a slight, I don't know if I'd call it a, a necessarily a twist, but certain players that or certain NPCs that are kind of presented to you one way at the beginning of the game that kind of go through their own journeys, which were really interesting. Well, that's an interesting twist. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Because normally they just kind of appear in places and you don't know much about them. Or they just sort of stay, stay static, you know, like this person's a good guy at the start and they're a good guy at the end, and this person's a bad guy at the start and they're a bad guy at the yeah. end. There's a little bit... There's a lot more sort of nuance in the writing and and sort of journeys and stuff that the NPCs go on. Well, that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It definitely is. And so... The writing is is definitely there. It's just, you know, the other stuff. But I think that's probably the best thing that they do is definitely the characters. Uh, after that, the city itself is is a pretty cool. Like it's sort of I found it decently interesting to kind of go around. It would be nice if there was a little bit more stuff, but. Um, you know, not a hundred percent necessary. No, I, I found it at least for the first while to still be a pretty cool city to go around, you know, especially coming from, uh, Bethesda games where, you know, their quote unquote cities are 12 NPCs, you know, right? like in the, in the entire city. And that's supposed to be, you know, one of the last bastions of humanity is 12 people in you know, in the baseball stadium in Boston. Yeah, whereas this is an actual functioning city. Yeah, and even though, you know, like all the the NPCs sort of, they just sort of walk in, in patterns, for me personally, it was still cool. You know, it was still cool to see, you know, 200 people actually rendering, you uh, know, to be able to run around them. Now, here's an interesting thought that just popped into my head. Mm-hmm. Let's say, not on a, not a far stretch of the imagination, that this one goes down the toilet. Yeah. But because of what I just asked you and what they did positive, and you mentioned the way the, the characters are developed and the NPCs, mm-hmm. do you think that some developer out there is going to take that idea and run with it, seeing that people liked it? I hope so. It's hard to say. Um there, you know, obviously it all comes down to money, and it's hard to know at this point kind of where it is. Last I checked, I think they lost a lot of money on the game, which means that people are unlikely to want to learn very much from it at all. True. I mean, but, but maybe maybe some indie developer will try it. Yeah. You know, I it's clearly not going to be the end of kind of dystopian future games. Oh, but... God, no. That's a, that is a tree that is still going to bear much fruit for a long time but you know it's i think this was clearly intended to be the setup for maybe a universe that they could further develop with other games i thought so but they uh kind of took care of that in one fell swoop didn't they yeah you know or with a sort of robust multiplayer aspect well they didn't get that right either Nope, unfortunately not. So it's, yeah, it's sort of hard to sort of guess where that, you know, where it's going to go or, you know, sort of what lessons have been learned from it, except, you know, once again, be be honest, you know, so many of these problems are just greed-based, you know, trying to hide something that will inevitably come out. Well, I was just thinking that when you say what lessons were learned, do you mean lessons were learned by us, the public, or by the video game industry? Both. Uh, One for, I mostly meant it by the video game industry. Uh, You would would hope that they would see that, you know, be honest and don't get too big ahead too quickly. Yeah. Uh, Hello Games, you know, tried to kind of hide that most of their features weren't there. Same problem. And then, I mean, it's only, you're counting down. Eventually your game will be released and people will see. Yeah. You know, so you're basically desperately trying to get, to hide it, to get as much of day one money before, you know, everybody, you know, goes on 
social media and starts ripping your game apart. Yeah, but I don't understand what their thought process is because they will have to give that day one money back eventually. Yeah, a lot of it. Uh, you know, CD Projekt Red, same thing. You know, they refuse to show any, you know, older console footage and refuse to give a lot of review copies and all this kind of shenanigans, you know. And again, if they'd been honest, you know... People it, wouldn't have cared as much. They would have been like, well, that sucks, but we're not going to take it too personally. Well, that's it. Just, you know, just be honest. If it's not going to run for most people on the older consoles, just admit that, you know. Yeah, people are going to find out anyway. Yeah, you know, we tried our best to make it work. It's just not going to work, and so we're not going to charge people $80 to play it on a, you know, a subpar game on an, on an older console. Yeah. People and, would have accepted that and respected it. Right. And you, th- you think about it, it's like, Man, how many problems in the universe could just be avoided by simple communication? Yeah, pretty much, you know. Uh, But, you know, yeah, they were just hoping that enough people would buy it and either not want refunds or something. It's hard to sort of understand how they thought that they were going to really make money on it because, frankly, within just a few hours... Of course, word spreads like wildfire across social media. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, it didn't even last a day, did it? No, it doesn't. You know, basically, you know, and some people are are even getting the game early just because, you know, certain places in the world release it early. Or if you work for a video game store, sometimes, you know, employees will take a copy home. So, yeah, I mean, within... If even two people in the world pretty much have played the game, they're going to be online talking about it, and word will spread. Oh, yeah. You know? And it certainly did. Yeah. You know, but I guess they hope that, yeah, enough people will not ask for a refund, or they'll have enough fanboys who will just keep the game anyway. Yeah, that didn't really work out for them, did it? I don't think so. No, I mean... They have to chalk it up as a massive loss. And as far as people learning, I mean, a lot of people pre-ordered it, and I think pre-ordering is terrible, as evidenced again and again and again and again and again. Absolutely. You know, don't pre-order things. No, there's (laughs) there's nothing that special about pre-ordering something that you would get to make it worth it. And a lot of times... You know, these games, there's no shortages, you know? Nobody was having trouble finding copies if you wanted a physical copy of of Cyberpunk from anything I saw. Well, that's... I mean, I remember that going back to when I was in college, and I think it was when Halo 2 came out. Yeah. You know, everybody was saying, oh, did you pre-order it? Did you pre-order it? Like, no, we're just going to go to the store. Mm, like, oh, you'll most... never be able to buy it. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. You have to pre-order it. Yes. So anyway, we went to the store, and there was like 55 copies of it just sitting there on a rack. Yes. Well, that's the thing. I think most stores overestimate and, you know, but I think a lot of what drives pre-orders is all their bonuses, of course. They stick the best stuff in the, you know, if you pre-order. Pay to win, baby. Pay to win. Yeah. Basically, or pay to have, you know, the best gun or, exactly. you know, certain certain whatevers. But it's just not worth it, you know. There's not going to be shortages. Whatever items that you get for pre-ordering seem to almost always migrate and do, you know, microtransactions sooner or later. Of course they do. So it's not so much that you'll have an exclusive item forever, it's that you'll have an exclusive item for the first month. Before they migrate it into microtransaction and everybody can buy it. Oh, my. Exactly. And by, you know, and so what's it get you, really? Exactly. Um, You know, so there's just, and the other thing I'd say is get refunds. The only thing that these developers and, you know, investors care about is money. And the only way... You know, they don't care if you go and whine on Twitter. They don't see that. Even if you whine on their official Twitter, no, they don't, they don't care, see that. But they care if you start demanding your money back. Exactly. If, you know, 10 million people ask for their money back. Yeah. Big hit. 
you know, all of a sudden, it's, like, wait a minute. Yeah, you know, it's sixty to eighty dollars a pop. That's a lot of money that they just had to give back. Well, and that's you know we said it before and you can apply it to a lot of different areas man you vote with your wallet yeah exactly and this hopefully was a wake up call to them Mm. that they can't just shove a game out there and hope that people are just going to latch onto it because of your previous success exactly it doesn't work like that you need to continuously deliver yep you know even the most storied Developers have have learned that you know Bioware learned that uh, Bethesda I think you know at least has been hit by that. Oh, they've been hit they... by it hard, but every single I don't one think of they've them... learned from it. But <laughs> yeah, they, and every single franchise has run into that. Yep. You know, Halo had a slip up, but they're gonna keep going. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, as we draw this one to a close, let's get your thoughts. Cyberpunk as an entity status. Dead? I think it's going to be dead. Yeah. It's... The writing's on the wall for it. I don't think there's really much of a chance. I would be... You know, I'll eat my words if they do fix it, but I would be severely surprised. And CD Projekt Red. What do you think their status is? Uh, Hopefully hurting. Uh, You know, hopefully a lot of people will... Give them a much more wary eye. You can't just say The Witcher 3 anymore. Right. And you know, one successful game is not enough to, you know, to overcome this sort of thing, this nonsense. Well, and also remember this. You're, you know, they're relying on The Witcher 3 to get this one out. What's the old adage? You're only as good as your last one. Exactly. So what's their last one? Cyberpunk. This. Yep. Ooh. Exactly. So that's how they're looked at. Is if you're as only only as good as your last game, they've got a ways to go. Exactly. But we'll look out for it in the future, and chances are Cyberpunk won't be joining us again. But CD yeah, exactly. Project Red, Rest in peace, Cyberpunk. Yeah, I think that's all she wrote for that. But hey, you never know, right? Weirder things have happened. If something massive happens, we'll update. Exactly. If not, we'll look for the next project they come out with. Yeah. And until then, we'll catch you guys later.